Alright, so now we're going to talk about different types of matter. And so, you know, law of conservation says it can't be created or destroyed, but, you know, there's different types of atoms, there's different types of matter, and there's a couple different things we can do with it. And so, there's kind of the first fork in the road here, and there are pure substances, and then there are mixtures. So that's kind of the first split. So, there's a couple different kinds of pure substances. The first one are elements. And so, you know, pure substance that's an element means that all the atoms are the same type. Now we're going to come back and we're going to really specifically define elements in a, in a couple of videos. So that by the end of this section we'll have a better idea. But that's the first one, is, is there's elements. And then there are compounds. And so a pure substance of an element, oh yeah, so let's back up here. So an example here, you know, it might be like a gold bar. So it's all gold atoms in a gold bar. Or, you know, urine. Whatever it might be. If you didn't watch the last video, that comment made no sense. And I'm not going to explain it. Go back and watch the video. Stupid alchemists. It's all their fault. Alright, so. Uh, compounds are um, made of uh, multiple types of atoms. Or different elements. So, but, oof, but they're put together in the same way. We'll say they're the same molecule. And what I mean by that is just, you know, it's different pieces, but, so imagine like atoms are like Legos, and it's like the same Lego set over and over and over again. Like it's the same car. There's not a different car in there. It's, it's, so it's a pure substance because it's all like the same set. Whereas this would be like, they're all the exact same Lego piece. Might be one way to think about it. You know, they're all blue, little, you know, two by two pieces or something like that. That are, you know, the tall ones. How's that for Lego descriptions? They all feel the same when you step on them. That's all I'll say about that. Um, but they do have different shapes. And maybe some hurt more than others. But, you know, there is a maximum pain threshold. And I think they all hit it. So, yeah, they all... They all hurt the same. Okay, so elements and compounds. Those are two types of pure substances. So this would be like, uh, you know, for compounds, this would be like water. You know, pure water. No salt in it, nothing like that. So water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. So if you have a glass of water with nothing else dissolved in it, which is very hard to do. Like, this isn't like tap water. This is like scientific water that you distill and filter and put through reverse osmosis and all this stuff to get all the other things out of it. And, and having other things in water is actually not bad. You buy bottled water, if they do filter it through reverse osmosis, they're going to put stuff back in it because it tastes funny if there's nothing else in the water. Like that's not what we're used to drinking. So, um, you know, you don't want like arsenic in there. But, you know, something like a carbonate compound is totally acceptable and actually makes it taste better to us. So that's what we do. But if you have pure water, that would be a pure substance, a pure compound. So, pure substances are the same things. Like, you, know, you just have a bunch of waters, so you have a bunch of H2Os together. You know, they're, they're different uh, types of atoms. There's hydrogen atoms, there's oxygen atoms, but they're put together in a molecule this exact same way, and all those are put together. You know, they're just all hanging out in a, in a glass or something. So you can have compounds that are pure substances. So then mixtures are typically made from multiple compounds. So for example, you know, salt water. Or our um, atmosphere. So we breathe oxygen but there's a bunch of nitrogen gas with it. So we're inhaling 
oxygen, nitrogen, there's CO2 in the atmosphere. Um, if you're on a crowded elevator with other people, there might be, um, you know, some really strong perfume or cologne or something like that that you're inhaling that you don't like. Or maybe you wish it was a strong perfume or cologne because someone, you know, you heard it before you smelled it, and now you really want off that elevator. So there's a lot of different things that we can be inhaling. Um, so the atmosphere is a mixture of gases. So you can have a mixture of, you know, liquids and things dissolved in liquids. You can have a mixture of gases. And you can also have, like, um, metal alloys or mixtures of metals that have different properties. So, uh, you know, basically if it's not a pure substance, it's a mixture. And then there's a fork in the road here as well. And you have homogeneous mixtures. And you have heterogeneous mixtures. And so the way these work is that a homogeneous mixture is everything is evenly mixed. So like homogenized milk, they, they take the cow and they shake the living bejesus out of it and then the milk comes out homogenized that's how it works they don't shake the milk they actually they, they shake the cow so they go they throw in the back of a pickup truck and they drive over a really bumpy road and then if it's still you know coming out and it's cream on top they just take it right off a cliff that's what they do yeah i i grew up on a dairy farm that's definitely what they do i definitely grew up on a dairy farm yes all right so uh you know example is you know it would be like, you know, good milk that's homogenized, not that cream on top garbage. Someone now is really mad, I'm sure. People, the cream on top milk people are very aggressive about their pre preference. But I tell you right now, you put that on cereal, and the, you, you put it in the fridge, and the cream hardens, and then you're like drinking a glass of milk, and you just get like a chunk of cream in your mouth. It's not pleasant. You put it on your cereal, and it looks like it's turned. Um... And I know I'm right, and no one will convince me that I'm wrong. But uh, if you like cream on top milk, tip of the hat to you. You know, you live your life. You do you. Just keep your milk out of my cereal. That's all I ask. So, uh, you know, you know, homogenized milk, or you know, again, salt water. The salt dissolves in the water. Uh, you know, Gatorade, coffee, tea, all those things where it's all mixed together. You don't get a separation. Uh, uh, whereas a heterogeneous mixture has what we call a phase separation. But it basically is something like oil and water. They just don't mix. But you get an oil layer, you get a water layer under it because of density. One sits on top, one goes underneath. And so it's technically like it is a mixture, but they have separated. You can stir them up, and then they separate again. So it's not a pure substance, because you have oil and water in the container, but it's not a hom homogeneous mixture, because they have not meshed together. They have separated. And so that's the difference. So you get oil and water versus something like salt water, or sugar water, or Kool-Aid, or whatever. Uh, I can't get my mind off of putting stuff in water, but like the atmosphere is a homogeneous mixture. Um so on and so forth. So, uh, next we're going to talk about uh, energy and matter. So this is kind of a very rough introduction to matter. We're really going to dial in on atoms and the periodic table and all that. And we'll start that in this section and, and it will carry through really for the rest of the class. So this class just keeps going up, 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 up. So this is the very beginning. We're going to be like, oh, there's matter. Oh, by the way, you know, what is matter? Let's back it up. I forgot to define matter till now. What's the matter with me? Okay. Three more people just dropped the class. So matter is anything with mass and volume. And you're going to be like, that's a really general definition. But that's the truth. So if it's made of stuff and it takes up space, it is matter. If it only does one of those things and not the other, 
it doesn't matter. It's not our problem. It's not my problem as a chemist. I study matter, not not matter. That's for the physicists. It's like, oh, this thing has mass, but it occupies no volume. And I'm like, I'm off the hook. Not my job. Take it up with the union shop. Not my deal. We divvied this up at the great science convention of 1402. Not my problem. All right. So, mass. It, it has stuff. Mass. This is, this is literally the definition. Totally. Not just my definition. Is stuff and volume is space occupied. So, you have the same mass no matter where you go. So, mass isn't the same as weight. I will mention that. So, like, gravity affects our weight. So, if we go to the moon, I take a scale with me. I just Jenny Craig that I lost like, you know, 50 pounds or something like that. I stood on the same scale on Earth, I stand on the moon, I weigh less. Why do I weigh less? Obviously because of positive life choices like diet and exercise, but also because the gravity of the moon is less. And so I weigh less. But I probably, let's be honest, if I got shot up in a rocket ship, I'm not going for a run or something. I'm. It doesn't take that long at the moon. I'm not going to eat that differently. Um... So there's about as much of me that, that left the Earth that landed on the moon. So I have about the same mass. Barring some sort of accident, like I lose an arm in an airlock or something like that. Then yeah, I lost a chunk of me, I lost mass. Um, and then volume is just space occupied. So you go to the store, you buy a gallon of milk. You buy enough milk that it fills that gallon. It is occupying that space. You buy a two liter of you know Pepsi or something like that. It's occupying that much space. So volume is just space occupied. So anything that just has stuff that takes up space. So, you know, I'm in the process of moving right now, and I've managed to live in the house for five years, and I have accumulated quite a bit of matter in here. There's a ton of stuff taking up way too much space, and I have to figure out how to fit it into, like, a pod or whatever, you know. Free piles are amazing. People in this town will take anything. Let me tell you, it's amazing. I put anything out there, and it's just gone. I don't even know who takes, like, no one even shows up. It's like, ghosts are taking my stuff. And I don't care. Like, this old filing cabinet, poof, just put it out there, because St. Vinny's won't take it right now, because, I don't know, might have filed some COVID in there or something like that. Gone. Someone just takes it. Just, I don't even see him. It's amazing. All right. So that's what matter is. These are the different types of matter. Very introductory. We're really going to build on the idea of what matter is. We're really going to build on the idea of atoms. And we're going to really circle back and get a better definition on elements as well. So, um, I won't bore you with any more of my nonsense in this video. So next we're going to talk about energy and, and, and uh, how it changes matter.